Hi everyone. Um, in part one of this video on numerical solutions of ODEs, we have discussed the very first thing that you can do to you know, numerically simulate a system for which we may not know the analytical solution. And what we saw was, was this explicit Euler scheme. Okay, here's the, the ODE that we want to solve, x dot equals f of x. And we saw the first step you can take is simply you know, approximate this by a secant, so two uh, consecutive points, and then we take this finite difference approximation for the derivative. And we then saw if you, you know, rephrase this in terms of an update rule for the next time step, we get this explicit Euler rule, which allows us to predict the next point in time using uh, things we know, right? The current system state, time step, and the right-hand side of our ODE. And we also saw in this simulation that you have, you know, this is the spring mass damper system. In white you see the analytical solution, right? So this mass oscillating and due to the damping the, the energy vanishes and it will slowly uh, move into the resting position. That if you use the explicit Euler, we actually get an okay-ish approximation. But we also saw that there are qualitative and quantitative problems. Right? Quantitatively you see that obviously there is an offset which grows over time. Qualitatively, we even see that we gain energy instead of losing energy or, or having a decay of energy, which is qualitatively completely false. So the issue that we have is low accuracy. And so this video is all about how to increase this accuracy. And there's several things we can do, okay? So first thing, one, it's quite obvious I would say, is we can say, okay, if the accuracy is not sufficiently high, let's just reduce the time step. Okay, so quite a um, simple thing to do. And let's have, before we continue, a look at the code, how this looks, right? You see here in red the, the line that is the explicit Euler with a time step of 0 0.1. And now I'm introducing here a dt2, which is dt over 5, so 0 0.02. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate the very same thing as before. The EE2 is now the same solution, just with this smaller time step. So you see here I'm using dt2 as my time step. So this one has a much larger number of, of discrete time steps I need to do, so it, it costs five times more to, to do the calculation. But we will see that after these plotting commands, when we compare the solutions, now this is what we get. Okay? So you have um, in red, again, the solution we had before, and you have in yellow the solution with the smaller time step of 0 0.02. And so you see the accuracy obviously improves, which is a good message. However, we see that the problem remains the same. It becomes smaller, but still we have this artificial gain of energy that shouldn't be there. And eventually this solution um, will, will diverge more and more. So, point one is reduce delta t, but we have to pay a price for this. And now there might be a question, well, I made this choice rather arbitrarily, right? So maybe there are different ways of using this discretization here. And so one thing I'm going to show you now, or two after coming back to this example, are about this, you know, different discretization schemes. And then in a third video, we will discuss how we can more systematically derive rules that give me better accuracy without, you know, having this linear increase in, in, in the costs by reducing the time step. Okay, so point one, reducing delta t. Point two is now, maybe we can use another discretization scheme. Okay, and so if you look at this, I said the x dot is approximately x of t plus delta t minus x of t over delta t. Okay, so I have this finite difference approximation, but nobody told me that this has to be t plus delta t and t. Right, so a, a very natural choice might be to say x of t or x dot of t, the time derivative, is approximately x of t minus delta t plus delta t times f of x of t. Okay, so all I've done now is I have replaced here this point by x of t, and so if you wish, this one goes away, and I have here this minus delta t, right? So the same approximation, basically, 
just shift it by one time step. And what I get now is what we call the implicit Euler. Why implicit? There's an issue that we cannot stress enough. Um, you see this is now the, the xt is, oh, my bad, this is not the time derivative, this is already the update rule, so I, I jumped ahead of myself and, and used this one. So the problem is what we have that this one is unknown and this one is also unknown, right? So these two quantities are unknown while this is now the known quantity. And so he, now you see very clearly why this is an implicit scheme. Right? The right hand side has the solution also inside. So it's not so easy to, to solve this uh, right away. What needs to be done is to find a, or solve a system of equations to get the solution. Right? For a, a linear right hand side, this is a linear system. For a nonlinear right hand side f, this becomes a nonlinear system that we need to solve in every time step. So it's more expensive. So let's, before we continue, I have a third uh, point that I would like to comment on, but let's get back to the spring mass damper system for a second. Why well, everything is rather nice, because first of all, we can compare. Second of all, we can, um, you know, due to linearity, we can find a closed form solution anyway. Okay, so the solution here is x dot of t equals a times x of t, so a linear system. And what you can do now is you can write down the implicit Euler scheme for this special case of a linear system. So we have x of t is calculated using x of t minus delta t plus delta t, so until now everything exactly as I've written it here, times a times x of t. Okay, And now you see since this is a linear system, we can try to reformulate things. We shift this term to the left and then try to solve for the x of t. Okay, So what you get is, if I put this to the left, I have the identity matrix minus delta t times a x of t is equal to x of t minus delta t. Okay, So just a reformulation, but if you look at this now, you can easily recognize something that is well known from, from you know, introductory linear algebra. Uh, this is the identity matrix minus delta t times a, so if we call this a tilde, and we call this b, then you see that we precisely have a linear system, ax equals b. Okay, so as I said, right, implicit scheme means we need to solve a system of equations. In this case, we need to solve a, a linear system. And this costs more than just using the explicit update rule, but um, we will see it has advantages in terms of stability. Um, one thing that you can also do is you can, in order to not have to solve the system every time, you can, if it is invertible, invert the matrix A tilde, and you get a closed form solution, x of t is um, A inverse times x of t minus delta t. But in numerical settings, matrix inversion can be very tricky, so you know, the more stable solution would be to solve this linear system, uh, this linear system. excuse me. All right, so now let's get back to the code. Right? So what we have seen now is the explicit Euler for different time steps. And now I'm going to use the implicit Euler method. And what I'm doing here is exactly what I told you not to do now because it you know, simplifies things a little bit. You see here, this is the, the array that I'm going to fill with data. This is the identity matrix. And the B matrix, here I'm calling it B, this is the A tilde here, it's the i minus dt times a. This is precisely what I've named a tilde here. And I invert this, so this means I explicitly write out the solution. x implicit Euler at the time step i is b, so the inverse of this, this matrix, um, times 
x implicit Euler at the time step i minus 1. Okay? So, so in order to make this clear, the b I've introduced here is a tilde inverse. But, you know, as I said, you don't have to do this all the time. For a small system like the, the spring mass damper, this is certainly possible. For more complicated systems, you can run into issues. Okay, so now this is what we get. And you see here in, in this light blue, the implicit Euler solution, okay? And you see, we don't have the problem of blowing up, but we have the, the other way around now, a problem in that the decay of energy is too fast. So this is also very well known. Implicit schemes tend to, you know, underestimate the energy. Explicit tend to overestimate uh, the energy. The advantage is it will not blow up. The disadvantage is we still have a low accuracy. And the reason is that both methods, the implicit Euler and the explicit Euler, are both of the same order of accuracy. We will get to this in more detail in the next video. But this means that there's not a real advantage or disadvantage in terms of, of prediction accuracy. And so one final comment that I would like to make before we close this video and then, you know, address it, this, this, this third point in more detail and more formally in, in the third video is the question, okay, we have now done a one-step prediction here and a one-step prediction here. Can we do a sort of a two-step prediction, right? And this is what's called the improved Euler. And I'm going, just going to state it here and we are going to talk about this in much more detail and in a more generous setting in the next video. So the question is why using one function elevation, can I use two function evaluations and then maybe get better? And we will see that this actually gives me an edge over just reducing the time step, okay? So the idea behind this is to say I'm taking two steps, which means I will say x at t plus delta t is equal to x of t plus delta t. So until now, it's very much in the same way as the explicit Euler scheme. But here comes the difference. f of x at t plus delta t over 2. Right? So just what I said, let's take the intermediate step. Right? So this one is actually not known. So what this means is we need to do two steps. We do an explicit Euler step with half the step size. If I enter delta 2 over 2 here, I can get an approximation of this. And then I do the explicit Euler step using this midpoint for the approximation. And as I said, well, now it dropped from the sky a little bit. We will see that you can do this more formally in the next video. But if I do this, then remember, let me scroll up very briefly to show you the solution where I had a division of five in terms of the time step. So I needed to pay five times the computing time to get the yellow curve instead of the red one. And here for the improved Euler using, you know, the time step I used for the red one, I have to pay twice the price. Right? And now compare the yellow curve, which has a small offset, to what I did here. This is now the improved Euler, so I have this intermediate step, this x half means I take the i minus 1 step plus half the time step times a times x i minus 1. So it's the right hand side evaluated, just I'm adding here, or multiplying by delta 2 over 2, not the exact time step. And then the second line here is the explicit Euler step using the right hand side evaluate at this midpoint x half. Okay, so you see exactly what I've done here. Now it's a two step thing. I have to pay twice the cost in terms of or in comparison to the explicit Euler. But the solution looks surprisingly well. Okay, so you see here again in red the explicit Euler. You see in, um, in, in, in this light blue the implicit Euler and you see in blue it looks purplish because it's directly over the, uh, the analytical solution, right? So you see higher order uh, schemes where I have to pay a little more because I have more function evaluations tend to be much more accurate. And as I said, this was more of a, an ad hoc derivation, but in the third video, we are going to discuss in more detail why this works and how you can systematically find these rules. Thank you.